morning, everybody. Um, I don't know if you noticed when, uh, when Ralph asked in the crowd if there was any bankers that I did not put up my hand. And uh, I did want to did want to comment to that because we do not believe that we are bankers at FCC. We're more than that, and, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit this morning. Some of you might be wondering uh, just who is FCC and, and why why would we be the financial institution to help your company achieve its goals? A lot of people still have a misnomer that FCC is just a primary producer lender that we just lend to farmers, which is is so not the case these days. Uh, part of my role is lending in the agribusiness sector, and we have a, a very large growing sector. Uh, in the agribusiness sector, our portfolio is growing every day, and that's our focus right now. Um, our portfolio right now is $22 billion, and of that, um, we're at about roughly $2 billion is, is uh, commercial lending, which is what I'm part of and what I'm going to be talking about uh, today with CanTrade. I want to start just by quoting one of our customers from a presentation that I attended just this week, as a matter of fact, because I, I thought it really, truly um, epitomized what FCC is all about and, and what our customers uh, feel that we're, uh, why we're a good partner to them and their operations. And he said that FCC is not an umbrella lender. When it starts to rain, they don't take your umbrella away. And I thought that was a very eloquent uh, quote from him. We do pride ourselves on being committed to agriculture and being committed to our customers through the tough times as well as the good times. A little bit about us very quickly, we're a federal crown corporation that provides financial products and services tailored to the unique needs of our customers. And we borrow our funds from the Government of Canada from the Consolidated Revenue Fund and as such we're not going to run out of funds. Um, it's not like we have uh, you know, a, a pot of money and some days we don't have as much as others, as much as our clients need, that's how much money we have to lend out. Which is really important to know that your financial partner has the money available to you when you need those funds. We've been committed to the industry for, for a very long time, we've been in business for well over 50 years, but we're also in it for a long time with our partners and we feel that we're, we're, um, we're very committed not only to their success today, but also well into the future. Now we can offer a combination of different products and solutions with flexible terms. And that's really what we pride on ourselves pride ourselves on is being very flexible and, and finding a product solution that's going to fit for your company. We have everything from committed, revolving, interest only facilities to long term fixed as well as subordinate and cash flow financing. And we provide term loans. We don't do operating loans, but we do term loans and are very much a complimentary lender. So we're going to work very closely with your other lending institutions that partner with you now. Uh, we do work in syndications, carried for sewer arrangements, and other terms of joint financing so that we can provide our customers with the optimum financing solution to meet your needs. Now in this particular case, CanTrade is going to be able to benefit from having a stable, committed lender as part of their financing team. Now one of the things that I identified when I was reading through the, uh, through the synopsis of the co company was that they're going to need a lot of working capital. And we've already heard that uh, EDC, our sister crown corporation, is able to directly fund overseas investment. Now although we can't do, uh, do direct investment, we can be instrumental in CanTrade's overseas endeavors by optimizing the Canadian parent company's funding so to properly capitalize and support their overseas subsidiaries or joint ventures. Now CanTrade is looking to ramp up production to enter into the Eastern European market. And that's going to require additional working capital. The traditional lending institutions would normally consider an increase to the company's line of credit, but subject to conventional margin restrictions. And, and we talked about that a bit, and, and, and Ralph made the comment about you know, what margining companies are, are typically looking at. And the other thing he didn't mention is that's going to be on a year-to-year -year basis. I mean, an operating loan is, is, tends to be a 12-month facility, and, and you're always looking at renewing it. Now the company could look to FCC to leverage their long-term assets and provide that additional working capital needed in this particular case. Um, we could look to set up a revolving term facility that's going to be secured by the company's fixed assets. I'm uh, making an assumption here that the company does have some equity. Uh, we can go in, we can provide a long-term facility, but it's going to be revolving in nature and it's going to be on an um, uh, interest-only basis. So it truly is going to augment the operating loan that the company has in place. We would take the mortgage, as I mentioned, against the company's real estate. Funds can be used for anything, including working capital. So as the payments get paid down, principal payments are at the company's discretion. But as the loan gets paid down, those funds are available again for readvancement for any other lending purpose. 
So it really does give the company a lot of flexibility for meeting their needs today, which is working capital, but also down the road meeting financial needs that they may have in the future. The loan is typically set up on a 15-year amortization and renewed every five years. So again, you're having a lot more long-term commitment from your lending partner. As the company pays the principal down, as I mentioned, the revolving term loan can still be accessed for additional, whether it's equipment purchases, uh, further expansion, that type of thing. This really is a complementary product with the company's existing operating loan. We would work very closely as well. A lot of people have a little bit of concern right away about, well, how is that going to work with my existing operating loan? We're going to work very closely with your operating loan provider to make sure that our loan is truly complementary. We'll match, we'll match the covenants, we'll look at security, make sure that the operating bank is still very adequately secured and is still happy. Really what it does, it, it's going to give, in this particular case, Cantrade's going to have the benefit by having a team of committed complementary lenders and they're going to have a lot larger increased um, capital available to them. One of the other things identified in the, uh, in the business case was that the company was looking to, to invest um, in Brazil and Chile. And uh, Cantrain is going to leave, need some long-term funds for that investment. Now, there are a lot of ways to do this, and, and Ralph did touch on a few of them already, uh, looking at funding. Um, it, it may be difficult for that company to, for Cantrain to find the uh, financing that it does need, whether, um, you know, EDC is not willing to go in that particular company or, they, or country or they've decided no, they want to put cash, their own cash into it, that type of thing. FCC again can be very much a complimentary lender and come in and provide some of the funding that they may need. We again could look at leveraging the long-term fixed assets to support either a letter of credit or even provide direct cash that could be invested in the foreign operations. Um, our, uh, our irrevocable letter of credit, much like EDC, is very favorably um, received by, by foreign banks because we are a federal crown corporation in Canada. Either way, the company is not going to be restricting their available operating funds through their existing banking arrangements and will maintain the level of working capital needed to expand their sales. Because really it is a bit of a juggling act, you know, trying to get the uh, required long-term financing as well as the short-term financing without, uh, without uh, strapping yourself. FCC could also look at direct lending uh, to provide investment, uh, cash to invest into the proposed new ventures. The loan could be interest only. Um, we, we can set that up for, uh, for enough time to allow the company to ramp up the, the new operations. Uh, we can do something like a 15-year amortized loan with a variety of options for fixing the rates. Now FCC prides itself on having very competitive interest rates. Uh, we can provide everything from variable rates all the way to locking the interest rate for an, the entire 15 years. <coughs> Um, we'll want to work very closely with Cantrade again to make sure that the payment structure that we set up is going to match their cash flow. So the last thing we want to do is strap them for cash during a period of uh, growth. Even if the company chooses to fix the interest rate, um, the loan is still fully open for repayment on the renewal date of the interest term. So again, it does allow the company lots of flexibility if they want to minimize some of that risk. And with fixed fixed rates for up to 15 years, really can trade in this particular case can eliminate all the potential interest rate risk on that portion of their debt. You know, at a time when interest rates are, are very low and expected to rise, I think everybody agrees it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, um, it's an ideal time for this particular company to fix their rates uh, on part of their long-term debt and really minimize any future cash flow impacts of rising interest rates. A further benefit of any FCC loan is that they're all long-term committed facilities and they're not on demand. And I think this is very important for a lot of companies that, that do have other lending, uh, lending partners involved and have current ratios and, and that type of thing that they're watching. So even if you choose a, a long-term loan but lock in the rate for only five years or even choose a variable interest rate, uh, at the end of the interest term, the loan is not on demand. It doesn't come up for renewal. It's just the interest term that comes up for renewal. And thus, it's going to remain as a long-term li uh, liability on your balance sheet. So there's not going to have a negative impact again, on your working capital ratio covenants with your bank. Um, and I think that's very important to note. Now, in this particular case, if Cantrade has already leveraged their fixed assets for working capital, and there's not sufficient security for, say, a standard loan to invest in some of the overseas adventures, uh, ventures that they're looking at, FCC, still can, FCC can still look at uh, helping them out with the financing that they need. We can provide cash flow financing as well as subordinate financing. Uh, to provide them with the funds that they need for their investment. 
Now these loans would be linked to the profitability of the company and the cash flow that it generates. Uh, again, payments could be set up with an interest only portion to allow the company time to establish the new operations and, and minimize the impact on the company's cash flow. Principal payments would be set up on an amortization schedule based on the company's cash flows and would normally not extend beyond seven years. Now under its current mandate, FCC is not able to take any equity position in the company, but we certainly can provide very unique stretch, subordinate and cash flow financing to assist this particular company with its expansion plans. We look to innovative ways to meet our customers' needs, and, and we really are looking for a long-term committed partnership with our clients. Um, with that, I'm going to send it over to Jeff Garland from BDO, and Jeff is going to talk to you about some accounting and tax issues facing Cantrade.